must have a shower. Well, welcome back to Ringworm. Man, a lot of you guys saw the video of uh, building this thing. It was supposed to be a, started out to be a deer blind and kind of got a little carried away and turned it into more or less a cabin on stilts. And the number one question, and in some cases demand, I saw it in the comments was in regards to me still living in a tent when I could live in this thing. And I don't want to live in a deer blind. I moved out here almost a year ago now, brought my tent and my sleeping bag and my chainsaws because I love camping. I just, I mean, I've spent years living in tents. So it made me think, maybe these people haven't been winter camping. Maybe they don't know how fun it is. Thought maybe if I just do a short guide about winter camping and how to make it comfortable and make it fun, uh, maybe it would get more people to try it. So I'm gonna try to stick a lot of information in in the shortest amount of time possible. Uh, but if you're interested, if you're somebody that likes camping and has never tried camping in the winter, maybe this will give you just enough information to get you out there and get you to try it. It's fantastic. I mean, listen. So this is uh, how to camp in the winter from a guy that lives in Michigan in a tent <laughs> all year round. I'm not one to obsess over comfort, uh, but I need to have everything just as comfortable as possible. This pillow and that temperature setting and everything to be happy. But it is important to be safe, especially if you're new to winter camping. And some people will say, start by winter camping in your backyard, um, being very conservative. I think that's close to correct. If you're in your backyard, I think it's a little bit too easy just to say, oh, I'm a little chilly, I'm gonna go inside. So I recommend, the first time you camp or the first time several times you winter camp is to camp near your car and you always have an out you always have a place that's warm and dry you know how wrong can things go if you have a car but you know a good running car nearby the two most important pieces of gear when you're winter camping are your sleeping bag and your sleeping pad your sleeping bag it, as my rule of thumb is in camping in the winter is I want a, my sleeping bags temperature rating the lowest rating on the sleeping bag to be at least minimum of 20 degrees below the actual lowest temperature that night. Um, age of your sleeping bag affects the temperature rating. I've got a, a synthetic bag that's really old. I use it in the summer. It was a winter bag and it's so broken down. It doesn't keep you warm at all unless it's uh, 50 degrees out or more. The bag that I use now is rated at 20 below zero and it's a down bag. It's quite old but down lasts a lot longer. So I'm still good down to maybe the single digits. Anything below sing single digits, I'm probably not gonna have a great night's sleep. Now the sleeping pad, if you think about it, when you're sleeping in a sleeping bag, you want all that loft above you. That's what keeps you warm. Underneath you, you're laying on the sleeping bag. So it's gonna compress all that, that loft down to nothing. And you're essentially sleeping on the ground unless you have a good pad. And for those of you that like to use uh, big bed air mattresses in the summer, uh, when you camp, it's really won't work in the winter. All you have is a big balloon full of cold air that you're sleeping on top of that your body will never warm up. So really do need a closed cell foam mattress or a thermarest, which is full of open cell foam. That's why it inflates itself when you open the nozzle. So you don't just have a layer of air between you and the ground. You have foam either way. You can double up sleeping pads. A closed cell foam and an open cell foam pad are great. Uh, I'll show you the pads that I use. This thermarest I've used for, probably used for about 15 years winter camping. It's not inflated when it is, it's about an inch and a half thick and it is full of open cell foam. It's, it was quite warm for many years. That was uh, my go-to until thermarest came out with a Mac Daddy. And when I started living out here, I tried uh, my buddy Tito's. He said, oh, I'll just try it one night. It's like, nope, I'm fine with my mattress. I slept on it one night and I bought one. 
it's a monster and it's very very warm this is the mattress i use now what is that about three to four inches thick it is unbelievably nice to sleep on it's not necessary you don't have to go out and spend a bunch of money just to go winter camping this would be the same as stacking two other mattresses on top of each other it would work just as well this is a 20 below down sleeping bag that i've had for at least 15 years as you can see the foot of it got wet because it was pressed up against the tent even with it being somewhat wet it's still got 10 inches of loft to it and for as old as it is that's still a very usable sleeping bag when i wake up and have a especially a wet foot like this i'll take a, a water bottle fill it up with boiling water or i throw a hand warmer which i have in there right now and by this afternoon all that moisture will be gone and it'll be puffed right back up. I even keep a variety of sleeping hats. Here's a warmer weather in between. And the Mac Daddy, when it's really cold, this thing is really thick. Makes a huge difference when that's almost all that's sleeping up, uh, sticking up from the sleeping bag is your, is your skull. You've probably heard the phrase cotton kills about uh, 8,000 times in your life. And I didn't get that memo. I wear cotton all the time. And I know people will scream and yell if I tell you it's okay to wear cotton outdoors, but it is. Uh, the reason you don't want to wear cotton is if it gets wet, it holds on to the moisture. We're still talking about car camping. Take extra clothes, take a bunch of layers, take a bunch of extra t-shirts, socks, everything. Change them out all the time. Try not to sweat. If you do, you've got too many clothes on. Take a layer off. Cool down a little bit. If you get the least bit cool, put some more on. But you don't, if you're into the tech fabrics and you like to stay up on the newest stuff, then get them but it's not like if you wear cotton in the outdoors you're gonna die make sure you got extra clothes change them when you need to change them don't worry about it don't spend all that money if you don't want to don't go to work to make the money to buy clothes to wear outside when you could just wear the crap you got already don't go to work at all i have these uh rubber lined gloves which are good if you got to get your hands in the snow these are quite a bit warmer and i always have work gloves and Honestly, 99% of the time I just wear work gloves because I have to be able to use my fingers all the time. This stuff doesn't allow me to do much of anything. So, I have a variety. have a thin pair, have a thick pair. You can actually just take a tarp out, a big tarp, and lay on half of it. And then if something does change, the weather does change, you can fold it over top of you and it'll keep some of the snow off. It'll keep all the snow off. Uh, but when you're starting out, it's not a bad idea to have a tent. This is a three-season tent. It's a tent that has mostly bug net. The bug net goes almost, not all the way down, but there's a lot of room to breathe in there. That is not as warm as a winter tent. That will not hold up in really bad weather. Snow will cave it in. But if you know, and you should know ahead of time, what the weather's gonna be like, what the temperature's gonna be, what the wind's gonna be like, a three season tent is great. If you're gonna use a tent, you may as well, almost all tents on the Rainfly have these little uh, tabs on the inside that buckle to the tent poles, and they're right where the guy lines attach. So if there's gonna be any kind of wind at all, of course, snow, it's always worth using these guy lines. You just stake them out to whatever you've got. I tied them to all sorts of stuff. Normally you just use stakes, and when the wind's blowing on your tent, it's not just gonna keep the rain fly in place, it'll actually hold your tent there. So you can see the difference between this and this side without a guy. And last night there was supposed to be no precipitation at all, but we got a little bit of freezing rain, which you can see here. So if I'd have been camping out on just a tarp, and that did happen, now you just take and flip the other half of the tarp over top of me, and I don't think that was for more than an hour last night, and it would have been fine. It's my recommendation that you take your wire stakes so that your tent came with and throw them far, far away. Those things are worthless in any situation, as are plastic stakes during the summer, but in the winter, as long as you have a foot of snow and you pack it down, these can actually hold pretty well. For year round, I use these aluminum stakes. You can see there's two two bladed and three bladed i like the three bladed ones you can pound these in with a rock which i've done many times just bash the heck out of them and i mean some of these i haven't been able to get back out 
uh, pounded them into the ground not knowing it's going through a tree root and then just had to leave them there but they are fantastic and really stout for the winter i like these these are made by msr they got a really good grip to them you can tie off through a bunch of these different holes then there's also the parachute which you can fill these with snow you can bury them under the snow you can tie off to them this is the avalanche shovel it just extends uh, they make them out of plastic they make them out of aluminum all sorts of stuff but super handy to have when you're camping in the winter if you got a spot you got to put your tent after you mash it all down you can use it to to level things out uh you can use it to dig out your fire pit all sorts of stuff so have some kind of shovel just take a regular garden shovel that'll work i'm gonna go ahead and pull out my mountain tent so you can see the difference between a three season and a mountain tent i do use this tent about half of the winter and it kind of comes and goes depending on what the weather is going to be if there's any wind or a lot of snow i stay in this thing but it does not breathe very well, so it does end up pretty wet inside after a night or two or three. Before I throw the fly on, I thought I'd just point out one of the big differences between a winter tent and a summer tent or three season tent. Is this has, the tent up there has two poles and they're in this configuration right here. They cross right at the top, that's the whole thing. This has heavier poles and there are four of them, which makes a huge difference in the rigidity of the tent so you can it'll take a lot more wind and a lot more snowpack uh, before this thing would ever cave in if there's any chance of high winds you should not be camping in the winter your first few times however if you made that mistake you do need to stake the tent out so it doesn't move you can be laying inside and have the whole tent trying to come up and uh, roll you over you can see on this tent the guy line system is a lot more robust each guy line clips off to three spots on the tent and underneath those three spots are velcro tabs that go into the poles you see there's still more guy lines to use guy lines go on here but this is a whole different whole different monster and they're very short and squat so that the uh, wind rolls over them instead of blowing the whole tent over. Another fun thing camping in the winter is most all the tents you'll be using have vestibules like this. So you can take your avalanche shovel and dig all this out if you want. You can have room to store all sorts of stuff. I usually, when I winter backpack, um, I'd take my shovel, dig it out, and then we could set two or three backpacks upright right there underneath the vestibule and they don't get snowed on. And you do not need one of these. If you do need one of these, you've done something very wrong <laughs> if you're just starting winter camping. You can literally just put a tarp down and throw your very good bed pad and your very good sleeping bag on it. Have extra tarp if you need to in an emergency, you can fold it over you. I understand if you're not so bold to uh, just want to sleep out your first time, the first couple times winter camping, sleep out on a tarp. I'd still take a tarp anyway. It's really nice before you go to bed. You know, it's winter. It gets dark early. You can put the tarp out, throw your sleeping bags, sleeping pads down, everything, and just lay out under the stars. You can still go in the tent and uh, sleep if you want to. It's beautiful and invigorating, and it might, after you do that a couple times, before you get in the, te in the uh, tent, it might convince you to next time not take the tent as long as the weather's good and you've got your car for backup don't forget the car i should also point out winter camping i used to think winter camping was winter camping was winter camping and i say hey let's go camp it's winter time it'll be great we have to keep in mind that the difference between 30 degrees camping and 10 degrees is the same as being outdoor in the summer outdoors in the summer you know, 70 degrees versus 90 degrees. And you think, oh, there's a big difference between 70 and 90. The same goes for winter temperatures. Yeah, camping when it's up near freezing is not like it when, you know, when the temperatures drop to negative 10 or negative 20. Think about it, that's a big difference. Say 30 to negative 20, you just think, oh, it's winter camping, one's a little bit colder. That's the difference between 150 degrees. The first two times I camped out in the winter, it was a year or two apart and they were both negative 20 and one was 30 plus mile an hour winds on the shore of Lake Superior and the whole tent was blown over flat on top of us all night long. <laughs>
and I think I had uh, two cheap summer sleeping bags. So that's a completely different experience than 30 degrees calm like this. If it's going to snow, don't go. If it's going to be 10 degrees, don't go. Look for 25 to 30 degrees and no weather and you'll have a great time. Before you set up a tent or set down your sleeping bag on your tarp or however you plan to do it, make sure you look up. Um, isn't it Jack London? <laughs> you don't want to end up a Jack London story. Uh, if, there's, if the trees are full of snow, uh, the limbs are, you start a fire underneath them, uh, all that snow will come down on you, same as when you're sleeping. If you get a little bit of wind, all that snow can come piling down. It is really fun if you have, if you ever get to camp in a place with 10 feet of snowpack or more, uh, you make a fire and slowly it'll, it'll melt down through the snow and leave a hole and you end up going all the way around the outside, digging it out so you still have a place to sit by the fire so you can still get that heat and it goes on and on and on so you stay warm twice if you dig it all night. But you do end up in, you can end up in a a big uh, room that's sunk down in the ground. I remember one time doing that in Oregon and we ended up with 10 or 12 foot walls all the way around us. And we actually had to shovel stairs into it to get back out. We also, I remember losing a bottle of adult spirits that night. We couldn't figure out where it went. And the next morning we found it like 10 feet up you know you could make a little shelf in the wall and put stuff on it we put our water bottles or pans or food or whatever and when we just started that fire somebody dug a little cubby hole and set the bottle there and then throughout the night we kept digging down so it was all the way up 10 feet in the air in the wall but it's great fun also recommend if you are really new to this um Grab yourself a couple Nalgene bottles. They're not that expensive and they are virtually indestructible. You can fill this with boiling water, put it in the foot of your sleeping bag before you go to bed. It'll keep you a lot warmer. You can put it between your legs or under your arms and it helps to warm the blood that circulates around. Uh, you can also put boiling water in it, put it in your cooler before you go to sleep and then everything's not frozen solid. That little bit of heat will keep things from uh, icing over all your food to be frozen. These are almost indestructible. I've used this this exact bottle is, I don't know, over 20 years old. I got it from a lost and found at a climbing gym I used to work at. I used this uh, one time for a jack stand. When I was doing the fixing the brakes on my car, I didn't have jack stands. So I lift, jacked the car up, set this underneath, set the car on top of it. It was full right up to the top. And uh, took the wheel off, did what I needed to do, put it all back together, and it held. So they're tough. I'm trying to imagine going winter camping without a stove. That's not something I've ever done. I guess you could do it. Um, I always take a stove because I want coffee and hot chocolate and hot stuff to eat in the morning and hot dinner and whatnot. Uh, if you do take a stove, make sure you got plenty of fuel, especially I would take as much water as you need and you know keep it warm, keep it in your sleeping bag, at least a bottle of it uh, so everything doesn't freeze overnight. If you plan to melt snow for water, uh, it takes a lot of fuel, a lot more than you would you would guess. It's not like heating water up from 32 degrees up to whatever temperature you want. So take take four times as much fuel as you think you're going to need if you plan on uh, melting snow until you figure out exactly how much it's going to take. It's always worth having extra. These are Baffins. I have nothing to do with that company. I got them because they're very warm and they have a removable liner. So if your feet do get wet, they do get sweaty. You can pull the liners out, turn them inside out, pull them around the fire, and they will dry out. If you don't have removable liners, you could have some frozen boots in the morning that you can't even get on. When I used to use uh, winter boots that didn't have removable liners, I had a lot of mornings where, you know, you don't realize how wet your boots are just from your own sweat or if they're not completely waterproof until you wake up in the morning and try to get your feet in essentially a, a ski boot, a frozen ski boot that's not even the shape of your foot anymore. I've had a couple times where I couldn't, I couldn't get my feet in the boots. Like had to take them and knead them, crush the ice in them. One time I had to put them in my sleeping bag for a couple hours before I could even get my feet back in them. So uh, bring another pair or make sure you got removable liners and you dry them out before you go to bed. Well, hopefully that gives you just enough information that uh, one or two of you might be enticed to go try winter camping. Uh, it is really fun. It's fantastic. You do need a few pieces of gear and a lot of it's rentable if you live anywhere near an REI or there are some other outdoor stores that you can rent a 
a tent or a sleeping bag and try it out for a night or two, I'd recommend that. So, you know, a good sleeping bag can cost several, several hundred dollars. Um, bed pads you can triple up on if you need to. So there are ways to do it on the cheap. I know I'd probably be roasted alive online for telling people that they can wear cotton in the outdoors and that you don't have to have a tent when you camp outside uh, in the winter. But I just, I don't know, I don't find all the gear that fascinating. Uh, we could talk about, you know, what kind of sleeping bag to buy or which stove is better than another one at a certain temperature. But I don't know, it's just kind of boring. <laughs> I have just enough uh, gear out here that I can live by myself in the woods year round and be reasonably comfortable and I'm not, I don't I don't want to get more I don't want to learn more you guys can find out all you need to find out online and you know there are lots of good places to go, <laughs> go argue about it uh, there's kind of no end to that but if this gets anybody outside I'll be uh, very happy the winter is a great time to camp if the temperature is going to be negative 10 just don't go out. Start at 30 degrees, work your way down if you're comfortable. Yeah, we're not talking about any extreme weather camping. We're not talking about backpacking, sweating, building shelters, anything like that. I just want to get people, normal people that are into normal stuff to go and try sleeping outside in the winter once. Uh, if you guys uh, want to see the next video, I'm uh, putting together a mashup of the entire year, living mostly by myself out here in the woods in Michigan. And there were a lot of clips. I, sh I think I shot over a terabyte, a terabyte and a half of video this year. And a lot of really funny, silly, ridiculous clips didn't make it into uh, the other videos that I put out so far. So I'm going to try mashing those all together and have kind of a high speed one year review of what it's like to live out in the woods. We have no money. <laughs> Come on, do it. Do it. It will hurt so much. No, you'll love it. Like it'll hold fat people. Jeez, they made men differently back then. And cut. So uh, subscribe if you want to see that. Get outside, enjoy the winter. It's beautiful. You might love it.